everyone. Welcome to the second part of the Golden Circle Tour. I hope you're doing great. If you missed the previous video, go on and watch it because we went to see where the North American tectonic plate meets the Eurasian tectonic plate so that we were standing on two continents at the same time. Then we went to see the Gaziers. Then we went to see a breathtaking waterfall. Then we we met Icelandic horses, the only breed of horse allowed in Iceland. The first wild animal of Iceland was the Arctic fox. And the story of its landing makes me laugh because the Arctic fox arrived in Iceland through an iceberg from Greenland. So I picture the fox getting a lift from the iceberg as if it was a ferry or a car and jumping from the iceberg onto the mainland. And sometimes a polar bear will turn up in Iceland as well from Greenland too. But they are dangerous to humans and livestock and also there is is not enough food supply for them or ice. Flying them back is considered too expensive and so the solution is to kill them. It is true that it's just a few bears but it feels like a terrible loss to have to kill a healthy animal as polar bears are already vulnerable and face a risk of extinction. Stopping at the volcanic crater, we traveled one hour and a half towards the Blue Lagoon. And while traveling, we saw a lot of volcanic mountains. And every five to six years, a volcano will erupt in Iceland, which is so volcanic because it lies, as we already know, on the meeting place of the North American and Eurasian tectonic plates, which pull apart two centimeters every year. Volcanic eruption starting in March of last year uh, until October, and then. Um for about 10 days earlier. The, between those mountains over here to the right, you see the black coming down. That is part of the lava flow from last year. It was uh, actually filled up a valley on the other side of these mountains and it was threatening to fill up this valley, either directly or through the famine that followed. But not only that, that black smoke, smoke went all the way to Europe. And Benjamin Franklin, later president of the United States, he was then the ambassador to France. He described this in his memoirs being like this black fog laying over Europe all that summer here. And this is the plant right here. And then other Icelanders followed and then tourists and it became a very popular place to go. But it was not very safe. First of all, it was extremely hot water flow. Before becoming the famous tourist attraction that it currently is, the Blue Lagoon was much more rough and locals would go there, but it was a bit dangerous because of the rocks which weren't looked after, so it was easy to get scratched. And also the water was really, really hot in some places. It was just a bit more dangerous and not ready to host tourists from all over the world. So now it's very different. 
different compared to how it once was. What would I give to be able to experience the true old Blue Lagoon? It would be really interesting to see it as it was. As it was. There were a lot of people who brought their mobile phones, but I just wanted to really enjoy the experience and relax, so I left my iPhone in the changing rooms. There was the comfort package included in the price of the day tour. I was just in the hot water sipping a good Icelandic beer with the face mask on and it was just amazing. <laughs> I only realize now that that is the view from my balcony. Yesterday I haven't even realized. Not bad, I would say. Hi everyone! I just came back from the day tour of the Golden Circle and now I'm going straight to the city center. I'm going to have dinner because tonight I'd rather not have those terrible noodles. Today was absolutely amazing. I've got so many things to tell you. I think I'll do a voiceover and explain the footage that I filmed. As you can see, my nail polish has been completely ruined from the substances that you can find in the water of the blue lagoon and my hair feels like hay it's absolutely terrible like the water of the blue lagoon is good for your skin but it makes your hair so dry our guide did say that our hair might get very dry and so we had to put a lot of conditioner on it before getting it wet but if i could go back i don't think i would get my hair wet and i would just keep it out of the water even though i want to embrace the blue lagoon experience so I didn't want to get worried about having to keep my hair dry but I must say it was so dry four days later so if I could go back I would not get it wet because even though I put a lot of conditioner on it it didn't work On my second night in Iceland, I decided to have dinner at the Vietnamese. It was delicious. In Reykjavik alone, there's five Vietnamese restaurants because a lot of refugees came to Iceland in the 70s because of the Vietnam War. I hope you enjoyed this video, like and comment if you liked it, make sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed yet because there's an amazing adventure in the south of Iceland coming up. I wish you happy holidays and a great ending of 2022 and I'll see you very soon, bye bye!